Today, there is a All India Band called by the various chambers and merchants unions against the FDI. And some political parties who recently bid goodbye to UPA also is spearheading an agitation on this issue. So I would like to make clear the party's standpoint on this FDI. There is an absurd crescendo of protest arising out of the government decision to allow 51% FDI in country's multi-brand retail sector. Undue skepticism from some quarters over the advantages this will achieve. The expansive justification of this policy rests on the principle of disintermediation, thereby pushing the middlemen out of the farm to fork food chain, reaping benefit to the farmers and consumers. Cynical political outfits presume that entry of mega retailers could result in lower remuneration for farmers and eradication of small retailers. This is totally illogical. The precondition of 30% local sourcing through SSI enterprises laid down by the retail FDI policy unfortunately dispel all sorts of trepidation. This grants small farmers and producers something which they never had. That is, a committed buyer for their products. The taste of the pudding is in the eating. The field has been left open for each and every state governments to decide which they, they want to swing. There is no compulsion, as you all know, for any state to accept the policy in it if it is not acceptable to them. But certainly, we feel one cannot pay, uh, play spoil sport and hinder the progress of another. Political parties should refrain from resorting to melodramatic buns and dharnas just for scoring some brownie points. The people of this country are prudent enough to, to envision the advantages of any policy. Those who talk of the ruin of the Kirana shops tend to forget that the Indian multinationals have been in retail for a considerable period of time. For example, the Reliance, the RPG, the Future, many multi, uh, uh, companies, major majors were in this field for the last almost two decades. But it did not have any adverse impact on the small retailers in this country. It would be worthwhile to mention that Walmart ended China some two decades ago and has opened 300 retail, st uh, retail stores till date. Yet, it must, it just have only 5% of the uh, market share in China. After 20 years, local Chinese retail companies are all bigger than the Walmart in China. Ultimately, with a little competition, consumers and farmers become the beneficiary. Looking at the bright side, the regulations of the policy 
ascertain that those who bring FDI in retail will have to invest 50% of their money in building new warehouses, cold storages and modern logistics. This would at least help prevent one third of the country's produce from perishing on account of lack of storage and transit losses. There is a wastage of food starting from the point of harvest, procurement, storage and transportation. Nearly 30% of the country's fruits and vegetables perish due to lack of cold storage facilities. The policy would help in the scientific conservation of food and also production of downstream food and dairy products. The surplus of this may be routed for export, earning additional revenue for the nation. So the Congress party firmly believes that the foreign direct investment in multi-brand retail is not going to affect the common man, that is the common retailers, but at the same time, it is going to benefit the farmers of the country and also those consumers in a big way. That has been the experience of many countries who have experimented this in the past. And we honestly believe, while the government has given the full freedom that those government who do not want to implement are free to do so. In spite of that, agitations and obstruction tactics is being adopted by many parties and many states, which is quite unfortunate. At the reform process, we feel it is necessary to rejuvenate our economy, especially the agrarian economy of the country. This is the party's view on the FDI in retail. There are, many, there are many other issues also. Let me now leave the floor to you. Now you may ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. That is not my thinking alone. That is BJP means the synonym of double talk. Not it confines to Modi. The entire BJP means double talk. And uh, while delegations is the brand of Modi's campaign, it's all to derive cheap popularity. And uh, we think that it does not deserve any comment on that. In fact, you know, Suresh Kalmadi has been a member of this committee even while he was suspended, even while he was in jail. I am also chairman of the Privileged Committee. Let me tell you that it is the prerogative of every parliament member to be a member of some committee. Maybe it is now being, I have seen that news item flashing. But every member of parliament, 544 members of the parliament are members of some committee or the other. They are asked to give their choice. According to that, committees are constituted. It is not nominated by party, but it is a choice of the member to be in any committee. So even when the person whom you mentioned, or any member of parliament, as long as they are members of parliament, they are members of some standing committee or the other. Sir, election committee is around the party nominated. No, no. 
we are asking them to send their choices they send their choice automatically that constitution takes place my name is not nominated by my party for to being in the power committee or the or a, a hrd committee we can give our choice that constitution comes like that so the thing is that as long as a member whatever be the legation or uh, charges against them as long as one remains a member of parliament he can be a member of the committee so that is the prerogative and i don't think that you know anybody can deny a parliament member their right to why, be a member of the chapter, why the party uh, sought uh, any choice from mr kalmadi not to kalmadi it is a general circular to all the 544 members we are talking about mr kalmadi no kalmadi kalmadi is a parliament member now so how do we deny that you know kalmadi or anybody for that matter any party member of parliament cannot be denied this uh, opportunity because that is law but he is a Congress has not nominated it. You mean Congress has not nominated it? Is, he no. Is not nominated by the Congress? No, 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 no. It is like this. We are sending a general circular from the parliamentary party minister's office that the members can express their willingness or their choice, which committee they want to be. So that constitution is automatic. Sir, the chairman of the party is saying that whom they affect the policy making by being part of such a committee. Don't you think that the party should? being in parliament and raising questions and attending the parliament also in effect the same as long as they are not prevented from attending the parliament the faith is the same mr jago around 50000 landless farmers and tribals are marching from gwalior to delhi and they have pressed the government to make land reform do you think the government has really done nothing as far as land reform we have all our sympathies for these people who are agitating for a piece of land and uh, the landless people their problems are very dear to our heart the congress government in the states has been taking effective steps to allot them land and uh, the agitation which you mentioned you know in fact our uh, government has already communicated to them and they are invited for a discussion and they have agreed to come for a discussion and the minister in charge has invited the leader mr rajagopal and their team for a discussion they are coming for a discussion with the government and we have all our sympathies for that election commission has around ah aapka aapka one second one second one second one second one second yeah one second one second does it worth that the congress party demand that from mr modi what he has said is a blatant lie and uh, such uh, gimmicks to attract cheap popularity does not deserve any comment on that the election commission has announced the date for the election in the gujarat and himachal for gujarat is on 13th and 17th of december and uh, Yes, yes, yes. We welcome that, and we are ready for election, both in Gujarat and in Himachal. Two BJP-ruled states are going to test the people's mood, so we are quite happy, and we are ready for election. Our president is today in Dutch court, and we have already started the election campaign. So we are welcome, and we are quite happy. we are quite confident also what you said is that you know about the outcome maybe they are overestimating their position but we will see and we are quite confident sir mr chakur yeah bjp leader arun jetli wrote an article saying that on the issue of the presidential reference party congress party should as a government is leading the nation and is interpreting the presidential reference in context of the two factors what is your comment some people are experts in misinterpreting but not congress you said somebody i think probably misinterpretation is the game which people resort to very often but we are not used to that kind of a game and what is supreme court decision how it came what is the legal recourse anybody any government can take what we have done is all known to all there is no question of any misinterpretation government position and stand stands vindicated will the congress 
Pardon me? One second, sir. One second. Yeah. I don't think Congress Party can do that even if they want, because it is a question of privilege. A member of parliament is entitled to be a member of a committee. Whether a party can rule out that, ask him to keep away, I don't think that probably uh, that is possible. Election is a good opportunity. Election is really a good opportunity for all the parties to propagate such issues, you know. Let us go like that. You know, you all know that, you know, when the uh, Indo-American nuclear deal was being debated, there was elections in the state. And that was the issue, main issue debated there. And we could sell our uh, points. And nobody could succeed. Nobody could, on that question, you know. Even the parties who withdrew support from the government on that issue lost badly in the election. So there is enough time and we are quite confident that we can uh, you know, convince the farmers, the small traders, that this is not disadvantages to them. Somebody was saying. Yeah. That cannot be said as a double speak. They have it. There are enough examples to prove that they are always doing that. But this retail in FDI, retail in other sectors, one they are agreeing, one they are not agreeing is not a double speak, you know. Because otherwise also, it is a, their uh, favorite pastime. So, yes, yeah. One second, one second. This is going to boomerang, you know. That is what Modi wants. That is not going to happen. We are not against any individual. We are opposing the anti-people policies of the BJP government in these two states. They are ruling in these two states and we are going to oppose the policies of the government. Absolutely. Whoever wants to set the agenda in their favor, I don't think that they are going to succeed. This particular invitation, I am not aware, but we are good friends. We always discuss with him. Invitation or otherwise, we will discuss with Chandrasekhar Rauji. We are always in good talking terms. Chandrasekhar Rauji personally is a very good friend of the Congress party and we always discuss with him. Now, which date this invitation, I don't know. But uh, we have no problem in discussing with Chandrasekhar Rauji. Chandrasekhar Rauji was a member of the Union Council of Ministers. There might have been some differences in between. That does not mean that we are enemies. We always discuss. Decision on Telangana was always on the cards. And uh, it is probably, I cannot tell you exactly the timing, but still that was always a very important issue. Those who were in power before us also could not take a decision. That shows that issue is really complicated. Those who were in the state, those who were more virulently demanding this, they were also in power, they could not do. So not that we are deliberately delaying it, but there are complications. All different aspects have to be taken into account. Being sympathetic to the issue also, we cannot straight away take an issue. And uh, at the same time, we are very much aware of the sentiments of the people. Can, can people expect a, a kind of 
we have to respect the sentiments of the people always you know that is the earlier the people's wishes are satisfied we are happy I have a feeling that, you know, that is a committee which was uh, appointed by the parliament after losing one whole session with a lot of hopes and uh, not only parliament of India but the people of India, I expect that this committee should produce a result and that should be a guideline for the future governments as far as this, to, this, uh, uh, this issue is concerned. So there is some difference of opinion. But I still do not think that, you know, they have, uh, you know, uh, lack of confidence in me because the way we worked for one and a half years has been in a most cordial atmosphere. But of course, there was some demand from their side, which probably we could not accept. Misunderstandings can be there. I still wish that they join back the, uh, the, uh, the uh, committee and we took the decide. Even when there is difference of opinion also, it is possible to produce a result. Those who have got a different opinion can add a, a dissenting note. That does not mean that the system be destroyed, you know. The committee system in parliament is an effective system. Parliament appoints a committee and the committee cannot do its job means it is a very, very sad thing. So, those who boycott the committee, I wish they come back and join and express their dissent and work together and uh, unanimous or otherwise produce a result. That is what the uh, parliament uh, expect from us. I hope they will. Calling anybody, I said that probably taking a personal decision sometimes may be interpreted as political decision. So I want to take the consensus of the committee and according to that we will decide. BJP's allegation, of course, that is one thing that, you know, that uh, more political, but the fact is that, you know, the reduction of the number of uh, gas cylinders, we do not like to, we did not want to take such a decision. But the fact is that the subsidy on account of this was reaching a stage which was not bearable for the government. So, unwillingly we have taken a decision, but also there are some factors that, you know, when you said about the black market thing, I would like to say, there was a parliament committee, standing committee on petroleum and natural gas, which recommended that six cylinders be limited, six numbers may be limited. That was a unanimous decision of a parliament committee. And also today there is a lot of uh, misuse of the uh, cooking gas domestic connection cooking gases also that should be stopped and uh, increasing the number is not the way for uh, stopping the misuse but government has taken a decision out of sheer uh, you know inability to continue the uh, subsidy to the extent it was No, no, I did not say that we accepted the recommendation. That is why we have taken the decision. I did not say that. Because about the smuggling, about the misuse of the gas cylinders, by reducing the number that will lead to misuse, that was the question. For that question, I said that, you know, some people at least think that by reducing the number, it will not lead to misuse. That is all what I said. I did not say that the government has taken the decision because of the standing committee report. This is continuation of a process. Government is going ahead with the reform process. And the subsidy, as far as it's bearable, that should continue. Where and when it affects the public sector is very survival. Reluctantly, we are taking some decisions, which of course, is not pleasant decisions. No.
not exactly that is not exactly the point you know because uh, the city gas which they are distribute in the cities that cannot be replicated in the villages you know because where are where there are where there are this distribution system is practical it is not there yes authority of india and uh, some private parties are also doing that city gas system is because you know the the uh, environment is conducive for that but in, in cities it cannot be done also yes aam aadmi aam aadmi living in the town is also getting the same benefit aam aadmi in the rural areas are not getting this benefit we are basically for the aam aadmi so aam aadmi ma'am i don't think that you know all people living in towns are all rich people we don't believe that will you be projecting cheapest candidate in himachal both we don't Thank you very much.